What's good, y'all? It's your boy Mendoza coming at you live with a mixed tutorial. Today, we're going to take a look at JST Clip and how clipping can benefit your mixes. Let's go. 9 to 5 and you tired, they say you uninspired. So I'm writing in the back room, busy clicking tracks like the drums alive. So clipping as we know it in the digital realm is when something exceeds zero like this. When you clip digitally, the peaks, they get shaved off straight. When we talk about clipping in the analog realm, we're actually rounding off the peaks rather than just shaving them off on the top into distortion. Yes, you are adding distortion when you clip, but it's actually a nice characteristic of distortion and it can add warmth, punch, um, and just an overall feel that you can't necessarily get from digital clipping. So let's take a look at this kick right here. It's a pretty standard kick as you can hear. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up JST clip. Now with this, there's only four main parameters. It's the times two, the drive knob right here, which is the main one, the trim knob, which I would say would be number two, and then a dry wet mix knob. So right here, we're going to drive into clipping to get those harmonics, to get that grit. If we wanted to make it even more grittier, if we wanted to have an extreme distortion, we can add times two. You do that. And then I think that one of the most important uh, elements on this plugin is the trim. The trim is gonna allow you to gain match where you started from. So say if you're peaking at negative six, when you drive it, you go up to zero, and then you can bring it all the way back to negative six so that you're level matching the plugin to what you previously had. So you're not just hearing the loudness effect, but you're actually hearing what the plugin is doing. And then of course you have the mix knob that allows you to blend in the clipped signal with the original signal. So let's go ahead and uh, clip this kick, see what we can do. I like it right there. I think if I went one more click, it was just a little too heavy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this back about 6 dB. See where we're at. So check this out. Without it, you can just hear that it's a simple kick. But with it, feel the weight that it brings and the punch that it brings to that mid-range area. And with. With that, one more time. With. So I just really like what it does to the transient right there. It just really makes it cut through a little bit more and it sounds a little more aggressive. Now that we got the kick figured out, let's move on to the snare. So I got a regular sound of snare right here. Check it out. Let's throw JST clip on it and add some drive. So I really like the smack that is bringing out of that snare. But what I want to do is because you're going to notice the right here on these meters. Look at where we started on the meters. About negative 10 and look at where we're at now. So I don't necessarily want to be fooled by the loudness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back. Let's try about 8 dB maybe. Cool. Yeah, that's that's about negative 10. Uh, so let's before and after this before. After. Now, this is very subtle, but if you could listen very closely, you can hear the weight that it kind of brings to it. I'm going to before and after it simultaneously while looping it. Check it out. Do you see the life that it kind of brings to it? It's not super dramatic, but it helps it and it brings it forward a little bit and it brings it to life. 
And that's what our job is as mixers, is to bring things to life. All right, cool. Now that we have our kick and snare in order, we have this drum loop right here that we kind of want to process as a whole. So I have taken all of my drums and bust them to an auxiliary. And now I have a little bit of processing on them. I have an R bass, a little bit of compression, and a little bit of EQ. But they're not necessarily doing too, too much. And I just want to kind of focus on the JST clip. So this is what it sounds like with the bit of processing that I do have on the drum bus. Cool, so you notice on some of those claps that it is exceeding zero, but JST Clip's gonna take care of that for us. Um, so check this out as I drive it. Now, first things first, if you notice right here, my trim is set to 0, 0.0. As I drive signal into it, it will not exceed zero, which is super dope. But what I wanna do in order to keep my gain structure for the entirety of the mix, I am gonna bring this down about negative three decibels. So before, With JST clip. Maybe a little bit heavy. I'm going to come back one more. Without. So this thing helps you so, so much because it's perceived way louder, sounds so much more punchy than it did originally, and it just has life and character. So this clipping device is something that is probably one of the biggest secrets out there because we want that loudness, but sometimes it's hard to retain that loudness by just adding a whole bunch of compression and you lose that flavor and you, you and you lose those dynamics. But with something like this, you're able to just add that extra weight that you didn't necessarily have to begin with. I wanna thank you guys for tuning in and reviewing this JST clip with me. I think if you go check out their website, they have some great products on there. And I think that this JST clip is actually on sale right now for like 20 bucks. So it's like a no brainer guys. Go check it out, put it in your workflow. Let me know if you like it like comment share subscribe appreciate you much love blessings and stay safe peace nine to five and you tired they say you uninspired so i'm writing in the back room busy clicking tracks like the drums alive arizona it's a summer night you know it never drops below 105 and you know i got my eyes open